So first thing, um, Canada is the second, I mean, ranked second in terms of top destination of choice for Filipinos. So usually um, our stu uh, students for international studies, they, are, um, they would choose Australia, but Canada has been very strong and increasing um, in terms of international student enrollment for the past years, and especially this pandemic. That is lalo now wherein um, other countries um, did not allow international students to start their program or to enter their home country, but Canada has been open and has been continuing um, continuously accepting students, um, especially international students all over the world. Also, in terms of the programs that you are looking for, it's actually the top three uh, in terms of program enrollment for Filipinos. So usually, um, majority of the Filipino students who are aiming to study at Canada, they are taking business programs. Second is health. Third is hospitality, tourism, and culinary programs. So basically, um, these students, they have previous education. Um, they have work experience already, and they are just doing skills upgrading in Canada. That's why they are going there as an international student. And also, um, speaking of program enrollment, in our school, Tanso College, um, and also in other Canadian schools, we normally rank the top 10 um, programs where, our pro, um, where, where Filipino students or that specific market um, yung pinakamadaming um, enrollment. So, um, last 2020, in 2021, four out of the 10, the top 10 programs that we have that are mostly enrolled by Filipino students actually um, belong to the These four programs would be the Culinary Skills Program, the Culinary Management Program, and yung dalawang hospitality program namin na diploma and the other one is graduate certificate as well. So these are the numbers. These are the information that you need in terms of student enrollment, specifically in the programs that you wish to study in Canada. So even if before the pandemic and during the pandemic 2020, 2021, ito pa yung numbers. So nothing really changed a, a bit, um, nag decrease, but continuously, we still have many students studying these programs in Canada. And now let's talk about the industry in Canada. I won't sugarcoat anything, but the industry is one of the most affected industries in Canada and actually the rest of the world. So lahat naman siguro during the pandemic, since travel is not allowed, um, very limited the new movement across um, um, the country and across the cities and communities as well talagang greatly affected, not, o not only um, the hospitality and tourism industry, but any other industry um, probably here in the Philippines as well. However, due to the efficient vaccination campaign and the East travel restrictions for, um, for in Canada, Canada is now slowly recovering. There's been an increase in terms of tourism spending, knowing that um, Canadians and also, like uh, residents of Canada, they really like to go outside. They want to um, spend their time outside, going to the to the cottages, uh, going to the hotels, spending some spending time with their families as well. Um, so we've seen that movement, and given that um, there's a parang, there's an increase in terms of tourism spending, that will also generate jobs, and also. Um, for, like for example, during the uh, during the during the pandemic, the height of the pandemic, um, there's also quarantine requirement in Canada, especially if you're the first time um, traveler coming into Canada. So that will also give opportunity for host, uh, hotels, restaurants, um, and other um, other accommodation um, businesses as well to take in customers as long as they are, of course, uh, following the policies and the rules set by the government in terms of quarantine. So slowly, it's recovering. And like I said, Kenina, Canada remained open to accept international students. So even if um, you're already in Canada, your mga internship and placements in your program, which is in partnership with our um, 
with our with the companies and with the hotels and or the industry part in our or our industry partners, they have been continuously um helping out our students as well, still doing their placements despite the pandemic. And of course, um for you guys, Magtatano kayo, is it is it the best time to travel to Canada or to start your studies right now? The answer is yes. And here are the three reasons why you should study now and why now is the best time to study in Canada. So first thing, um, you will start your program, let's say, this September or year. So you want programs to say in Canada, usually it's one year or two years. So if you will study one year or two years or maybe three years, um, you will already see an improvement in the industry by the time you graduate. So during the time that you are studying, you are um, upgrading your skills, um, you're learning new education. Um, solely that will also give you uh, more, um, give you give more time to the industry to, uh, to improve itself. And of course, uh, by the time that you graduate, there will be more jobs available. Mas naka uh, adjust na yung industry with the new normal. And like I said, kanina, slowly recovering in si Canada, but but hopefully after one year or two years that you have um, finished your studies, mas okay na siya, mas okay na yung industry so that you can already start working. Also, um, give me one second, I just need to update this one. Okay, industry has changed significantly because of the pandemic. Um, for example, ngayon, meron tayong mga health declaration forms, the cancellation policies of the industry, especially hotel check-ins, they're very different now. They're more flexible as compared to before. Same goes with um, even yung mga plane tickets, nag-iba na rin yung mga, yung mga policies nila and whatnot. Same goes with the restaurant scene as well. Um, things are fairly different. Uh, mas nag-invest tayo in terms of digital marketing, yung mga um, food deliveries. Uh, mas madami na tayong online transaction rather than the, um, the, the tra traditional one. So the industry drastically changed because of the, of the pandemic including the um, culinary hospitality and tourism industry in Canada. So the previous education that you've had and also um, your know, work experience, you, know, you also have to adapt to what is the new normal now in the industry. So the good thing about um, adapting to it and studying is that you can get a head start when you enroll and study in any Canadian schools. Because, um, for example, in our school, Fancher College, when we create our programs and how we teach our programs, we only uh, we don't only teach our programs by it's usually practical learning. So kung ano yung mga best practices or current trends right now in the industry, that's the one that we are teaching you um, in your lab, in your um, practical sessions, in your um, academic classes and whatnot. So when you study in Canada or when you study any program in any Canadian schools, you have a head start in terms of education. You will have advanced skills uh, but na appropriate dun sa um, so kung ano yung trend ngayon, kung ano yung bagong practice ngayon um, because of the pandemic. And also you can have a, a head start in terms of work experience because many of the Canadian schools are offering placements in the programs um, in culinary, hospitality, and tourism as well. So in terms of programs, I will just share with you um, a sample program um, that we have. So in Fancho College, so we are a, a public college in the province of Ontario. So we have the School of Tourism, Hospitality, and Culinary Arts. So in our school, we have different types of programs that you can um, study. So we try to provide a variety of programs for our students. Um, I believe this goes to other colleges as well in Canada. And we have different credentials that you can um, finish as well. So um, for the entry level, we have the post-secondary certificate, which is a one-year program. And we have the culinary skills. And we have the professional butchery techniques. Um, I would just like to highlight your professional butchery techniques. Um, as you know, Canada is an agricultural, com uh, agricultural uh, country and we um, top uh, meat producer in Canada. So um, 
there are a lot of job opportunities and, and good paying jobs in terms of um, butchery. Um, so we have that type of program. Not all the schools in Canada would offer this program. So we have one, luckily, in Cancer College. If you want to study a two-year program, um, we have post-secondary diploma programs of two years. So we have Adventures, Expedition, and Interpretive Leadership. We have Baking and Pastry Arts Management. We have Culinary, um, Event Planning, Food and Beverage, Golf and Club Management, Hospitality and Hotel, uh, Hospitality, Hotel and Resort Services Management, Nutrition and Food Service Management, and Tourism and Travel. So as you can see, yung mga, yung mga programs dito na may asterisk. So these asterisks, ito yung ay yung mga co-op programs namin. So what is co-op? Probably if you've already started your search about studying in Canada, you will come across yung co-op or cooperative education or yung mga um, placements, internship, and whatnot. So ano ba yung difference itong dalawang to? Placements are shorter in terms of duration. So luckily, for the School of Tourism and Hospitality and Culinary Arts, majority of the programs um, in this school would have placements. So yung mga placements would include internship, externship, field placement. And also, placements are not paid. Uh, but depending sa industry, such as this, yung mga hotels and restaurants or, or, or companies na uh, pinupunahan ng mga students namin for placement, they give them allowances, they give them incentives. So that's a good thing. But other programs that we offer in a May placement, normally, hindi siya paid internship. Co-op or cooperative education, on the other hand, is short, uh, sorry, is um, longer in terms of duration. So, for example, yung food and beverage management program namin. So, you have a specific semester. It's called the work term. Um, it can be in between your second and third semester or towards the last part of your program wherein you will be spending your four or to eight months of paid internship in a company, in a hotel, or in a restaurant. So, and also since it's co-op, it's paid internship. So you will earn higher than minimum wage or kung ano man yung rate na ibibigay ng company when you're spending your co-op with them. So again, um, those are the difference between co-op and internship. But the good thing about this industry is that even if you are starting, I um, mean, you're taking a program na may placement, there are yung incentives mga kuha. Of course, depende yan sa mga, sa employer na, na pupuntahan nyo for that placement or for, um, for that placement or for that internship. So those are two-year uh, two year post-secondary diploma programs. And we also have graduate certificate programs na one year and two years. So the two-year program that we have is hospitality and tourism operations management. And we also have a one-year program called Food Processing and Operational Leadership. So some of you might ask, bakit dalawa yung hospitality program? So one is post-secondary and the other one is graduate certificate. So um, if let's say an applicant, if for, for example, you, if you have prior, um, if you have a formal education already in tourism because you um, you already studied here in the Philippines, this new work experience, then and then you can do the graduate certificate program in the two years because what you need is skills upgrading. You have a previous knowledge already, pero kailangan mo lang ng retool it. Um, if you don't have any background or you don't have any, let's say, formal education in this program or in this industry, then you have to do the post-secondary diploma because for the post-secondary diploma, you will be um, taught the basics or the fundamentals for that specific program. So um, that's what you need, of course, um, when you would like to pursue this career later on in Canada. So these are the sample programs that we have. Um, the next few slides, I'll be sharing with you videos um, highlighting two of our programs, um, hospitality and also one for culinary night. My name is Riddy. I'm currently enrolled in the second year program at Fanshawe Culinary Arts Management. I knew that ever since I was little, I wanted to be a chef and that I wanted to 
get into a great culinary arts program somewhere, and I knew that Fanshawe was going to be the one for me. We offer a one-year program called Culinary Skills. Out of that, you can expect to get an entry-level position. They might call it a third cook or a prep cook or an assistant cook. Or you can stay for a two-year program, which includes a work placement in, in between first and second year. Out of that program, you can expect to graduate and enter the workforce at a slightly higher position, what they might call a second cook or a first cook or a line cook or a kitchen supervisor. After coming here, I, I learned a lot of techniques that allowed me to work in my co-op, such as time management, working with other people. Being a chef is just, it, it's not just to know how to cook, it's a lot more than to know how to cook. If you have to be a team player, then you, you should also know time management, organizing your stuff, having everything in order to make good food. The one thing that I'm most proud of, and I think that it's going to have the most impact on our students, is our restaurant. For our students to have that opportunity to go there and work and gain that valuable real life experience, now more than ever before, because we're right in the thick of things in downtown London, surrounded by restaurants and entertainment, I think that's, that's the most important form of preparation because that's what they can expect when they get out into the industry. I don't think any other school could have topped what I've learned here. The people that I've met, especially the chefs, they've really set me up for the future and I know that I'm gonna do great things one day. My name is Sherry Richardson and I graduated from Fanshawe College in the Hotel Management Program in 2003. I decided to go to Fanshawe, which was closer to my home base in Woodstock so I could commute and I chose Hotel Management because I thought it was a good fit at the time and uh, obviously it's been a very good fit moving forward. It was the first time that I had ever really been outside of my comfort zone. Growing up in a very small town, you went to school all through public school, all through high school with the same people. So being introduced to new crowds and people from different walks of life was really great. It was a great experience. Uh, the friends that I made in my program at Fanshawe uh, are still friends that I have today. Every day is a different day. With my position, it's like a puzzle. You have all of these pieces that are around you and it's your responsibility to help put them together. There's a really big sense of accomplishment and pride that comes with that. My advice for future graduates or graduates of the industry and the program at Fanshawe College is it's okay to learn how to walk before you run. A lot of people sometimes have the impression that if you go to school in a management program that you need to walk out and be a manager. I started as a room attendant and gradually worked my way up into leadership roles throughout the company and it helped me to be able to understand what other people are going through. All right, so the next thing that I would like to share with you is the canvas that we have in London City. Um, especially for School of Tourism, um, Hospitality, and Culinary Arts. So this is this, uh, um, the downtown campus. So in downtown area, which is like this, um, this, the business district of, um, of cities in Canada, it's called downtown. So in London downtown, we have two campuses. We have one for School of Tourism, um, Hospitality, and Culinary Arts, and then the other one, is the campus um, across it. It's the School of Digital and Performing Arts. So this specific campus, we have the chef's table, we have the kitchen for both um, baking and culinary arts management. We have the mixology lab, we have the simulation lab and for golf course management. And also um, it's 20 minutes from our main campus. But even if you are in this campus, you have access to the registrar's office and the international center as well. So aside from the pictures, I also sh um, would like to share with you a quick video um, to show you the facility. Um,
correct. So um, I would just like to highlight the chef's table. I think it was also mentioned in the video a while ago. The chef's table, it's a restaurant um, in a cafe. There's actually two, uh, two spots. One is a small cafe and then the other one is a restaurant. It's run and managed by our students. So for example, you are taking a program na culinary management. Um, you will have to spend several hours um, probably in your semester wherein you will be cooking um, yung mga orders and you'll be serving customers at chef's table. So you have an opportunity for that one. You don't have to go elsewhere to have that um, hands-on experience. We can do it in the chef's table right inside the campus of Fancho College. New chef's table cafe naman, for example, um, this, is, this is the place wherein we sell yung mga bread, si mga pastries created by, by our baking and pastry management students. So I, would, I, I had a good chance to, um, to dine in here and also get some coffee. And nakikita ko na madaming Filipino students yung um, taking this program. So I was able to interact with them uh, when, I, uh, when I got some coffee and pastries when I visited. Also, if forever you're applying for um, hospitality uh, and tourism operations management and food and beverage, for example, there are events um, of Fancho College na may mga VIP or, or any events led by Fancho College. Normally, we do it in our downtown campus. So, yung downtown campus, as you can see, maganda yung, um, yung lobby niya. And there din kasi malalaking spaces for events. So, our students are the one doing the service for these events. Para at least exposure na rin sa kanila um, uh, in the campus as well. So, uh, this is the picture of both kitchens. So, this one is for baking and pastry and this one is for culinary management. So, like um, was said a while ago in the video, majority of your, um, your time in the program is actually practical sessions. So, mas konti yung um, lectures. Although you have lectures, um, you might have quizzes as well, but mostly practical talaga siya and you'll be spending a lot of time here. So um, in terms of the things that you need in the, uh, for your program, you might not spend a lot on books, but you have to, of course, purchase a uniform that you will use in the kitchen. Also, we have the food and beverage management program. So we have a mixology lab. So we, um, here, it's um, this is the front part of the mixology lab. So your professor is usually here, there's a projector, and it will it can be seen from, from the back part of the of the of the lab itself. So you can see now there's a uh, um, a wide array of beverages and liquors um, here. And in your program, hindi mo kailangan mag wait ng turn mo um for you to do whatever it is uh, being taught by the by this by the professor there in kayong sari station so here in the station meron kang um sink meron kang equipment meron kang access to the liquors around you and it is a shop of course right now because of physical distancing social distancing in the campus as well um there's partition and merong scheduling because we can only accommodate a number of students inside the lab. Um, so you will, be, you will be scheduled when it's your time. And now um, I will be on my last two slides. So I hope that you are now more interested in study uh, culin um, culinary tourism and hospitality in Canada, probably in fancy college as well. So these are my tips for you um, before we presentation and also get into the um, questions that you might have. So for the application reminders, please do your research. Um, um, uh, there are a lot of programs available for you. There are a lot of um, schools that are offering the same programs, but I think um, having your research at the same time, um, if you need help, you can uh, extend your, um, your inquiries to IDP so that they can pretty much help you in finding the right program and right school that fits your credentials and also what you really want um, in terms of your studies in Canada. Also, you have to start your applications early. For schools in Canada, um, we our school application is pretty easy. Like for example, from our end for Fanshawe, we can issue your letter of acceptance if you apply 
um, within four business days. So makakuha ka na ng acceptance letter, magbabayad ka lang ng deposit and uh, and tuition fee payment and you're good to go. But it's the visa application that's really taking time right now. Because of the pandemic, um, it's around two to five months of um, for application for visa. So you really have to take into consideration that timeline. And also, um, the programs in School of Tourism, Hospitality, and Culinary Arts, they are very popular among international students, which means madali silang mag-close. Um, currently, majority of our programs in May um, intake is already closed. Um, we are now open to accept students for, for September or fall 2022 and any intakes in 2023. Uh, but that's not the same case with, with other colleges. So you have to check with them as well. Pero most likely, yung mga nakupo ng programs na una, ito yung mga programs na to. So please do apply early if you really came to start your program in Canada by, let's say, this September or by next year, 2023. Also, um, there are a lot of there are a lot of um, Canadian schools who are waiving their English requirement. Um, Tanja College, we don't require IELTS, any English test or certificate of medium of instruction for our applicants. If you are Filipino students taking these programs, so it's very easy. You just need to submit your um, high school and college credentials so that you can uh, apply and get a letter of acceptance. And lastly, you can join the IDP fair on February 12th. Uh, I will be there. I will be. I'll be one of. I'm part of the uh, participating schools in IDP uh, fair on February 12th. So there, if you have more questions, if you want to do, if you want to have a consultation with me, please do so. You can join our booth um, and also explore other colleges as well present, um, so that you can um, look for the right program and of course the school that fits you. So that's the end of my presentation. If you have questions, please um, type it in the chat box. We'll answer it one by one. And you can also explore our school if you're um, kind of interested or you're curious about our school, please explore Fancha College in our website and also our social media pages in Facebook and in YouTube, Fancha International.